Hello, this is the Brothers Herman, and we just got back from watching Amazing Spider-Man. Yay! And this is for a given value of instant. Spider-Man does whatever a spider can, spins a web. Alright, so like we said, we just got back from seeing uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, really liked this movie. I think they did a very good job with it. I agree, and they did a very good job of separating themselves from the Raimi movies, which they needed to do, um, because otherwise everyone would be drawing direct comparisons, and this just wouldn't work. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I thought that the, the movie was handled a lot differently. The, I mean, you can cover the same ground without cover, without making the same themes, and I felt this movie did a very good job of really covering the same ground, which, uh... It's it, the creation it, story. Right, but doing it in a very different way, and, and sort of focusing on different elements of that, rather than focusing on what the Raimi movies focused on. Right, and also, it, the, the, the main plotline, not just the creation part, but the main plotline, actually explores, um, first off, a villain we haven't seen in the movies before, and second off, an, an um an era of the comics we haven't seen, which is to say it explores the lizard as a villain. And, and with the uh, and the Gwen Stacy, Captain Stacy um, storylines, which were very big in the comics for a while. Yes, because if you think about it, I mean, how obviously, how many times can you really over, you know, go over the, you get bit by a spider, you get powers. I mean, I'll give them credit, they handled it a lot more humorously I'm trying very hard not to make direct comparisons, but, you know, given that it is so recent, you know, we're not talking that long ago, they, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, so it's been a decade, it hasn't been that long, um, that, that you kind of have to, and that they did it with a little bit more humor. Right, definitely, and one area I think is interesting to focus on is, uh, I mean, if, just to keep the random comparisons going, this will probably be the end of that, um... The Raimi movies had a specific time period they wanted, you know, when Peter Parker uh, was out of high school, he was working for the Daily Bugle, all that kind of thing. So the, the, if it's an origin story, the sort of lessons that a, that a high school Spider-Man would have learned had to be sort of compacted. Whereas in this movie, the sort of the lessons that, uh, the, that a high school Spider-Man learns and, and the growth in power can take place over the course of an entire movie as opposed to in a 20-minute opening. Yeah, more on that later. Um, another way they separated um, themselves from the old ones, they picked actors who I think looked a lot more like what they were going for in the in the a lot more like what Peter Parker was, Gwen Stacy was, Captain Stacy was. I uh, think uh, Andrew Garfield um, did a very good job with Peter Parker, and that they were so enamored of this very Peter Parker-looking character that they took every opportunity to show you him at every opportunity. So... Yes, like by doing things like this. I'm Andrew Garfield. This movie, he removes his mask more than he did in Spider-Man 2. And that, my friends, is saying something. <laughs> I mean, just consider this for a second. For the longest time in the Spider-Man comics, Peter Parker never reviewed, revealed his, revealed who he was to the to the public, and furthermore, when he did, it was a huge deal in the comic worlds. So the fact that in an origin story, he reveals himself to everybody, all and sundry, and only one time unintentionally. So let's look at the characters themselves. Um, we we've already kind of briefly touched on Andrew Garfield, but well, more than briefly touched. Uh, we also had. Uh, Gwen Stacy, portrayed um, by Emma Stone, uh, who this is really kind of funny. Is that you know you look at her roles, she, they've kind of gone up, and she kind of came to this, and I'm kind of glad she did. Uh, she definitely fits what Gwen Stacy was supposed to look like, and did a very good job. Um, and as we said previously, it explores a part of the mythos that really hadn't been touched. I mean, Gwen Stacy was in the other movies, but she didn't play a, an important Such role. Such a tiny role. Yeah, it was it was minuscule. It's like, hi, I'm Gwen Stacy. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and she of course she was in Spider Man three as opposed to the origin story, which is 
Sort of. All right, a little hint to those of you not in the know. That entire bridge scene um, with the, the Green Goblin and go, going over the edge, in the comics, that was not Mary Jane. That was Gwen Stacy. And it did not have the happy ending that it had in Spider-Man 1. No, it certainly didn't. <laughs> Neither uh, did the uh, Captain Stacy storyline, but well, uh, on that note, um, I thought that uh, Captain Stacy, who was played by Dennis Leary, um, was a very interesting character in the movie because he's sort of he he's set up as an antagonist, but he has a very integral role to the development of the movie and the hero that is that is handled really well in the movie. And over the course of the movie, he's revealed to be. Um, a, a much more three-dimensional character than is previously indicated. Yeah, for his time in the movie, Dennis Leary was probably the perfect character to play him. Yeah, um, I mean, going on that, because this was, other than Andrew Garfield, who I really didn't know before this, I knew he was going to play him, because I'd been following this a while, I knew who Emma Stone was, I knew who Dennis Leary was, and obviously, if this kind of hits the next point, because I mean, this was a very star-studded cast, which usually indicates other things, but um, Uncle Ben was played by Martin Sheen, and and it just... And I think to the benefit of the movie, he didn't do as good a job as... He, he did certain things better, but he wasn't this all-important, you know, just, you know, we keep going back to it and, you know, keep harping on it, that... I mean, yes, it was big, yes, it was major, but, you know, because he wasn't this, like, because he didn't dominate in his role, it kind of let the rest of the movie able to flow as opposed to be centered around him. And this movie did flow very well. Um, I think they took a lot of storylines from Spider-Man, and, uh, and they really gave them their time without overwhelming. I, I thought it flowed very well. Um, and in that sense, the plot was carried very well by the movie. There's not too much time spent on any one thing, but also nothing is really neglected. Um, you know, I, I think they did very well. One last thought on the characters before we move on to uh, the camera work. Um, I One of the things I liked, uh, between Andrew Garfield and the guy who played um, the main antagonist, uh, neither one of them, it's not a battle of the models, as uh, previous Spider-Man movies might have been. It's kind of a battle of, I mean, kind of a battle of the nerds, uh, and I think that was pretty fun. The camera work, they got the memo. I don't know how, and I'm glad they did. That the trailers, the first person view, while it did feature, given the trailer, I believe it was supposed to be a much bigger part, and... That yeah. definitely wasn't the case, and thank well, God. Actually, let's be honest here. The trailer featured more first-person. It was about a minute and a half of first-person Spider-Man footage. There is more first-person Spider-Man footage in the trailer than there is in the sum total of the movie. But where it is used, well, one or two of the times, it's kind of like, eh, why are you putting it there? When it's used in the battle scenes, it's actually very effective. I like that. Um... So, you know, use it right, it's a good thing. And as for the um, cinematography, along with the choreography, this Spider-Man fought like Spider-Man. So if you've read the comics, you know, and anything like that, uh, you know that Spider-Man is supposed to be a bit more agile and fast. Yeah, they actually had this Spider-Man um, be a bit lower power and yet stay in the fight more. And so he is flat out doing everything he can to dodge out of the way, to use the webbing and the fight and all of that, it comes across very well. You will not confuse this hero with, say, a daredevil or um, another character like that. Um, it, it comes through very well, and they took a full advantage of that. It was fun. I also thought, yeah, beyond that, like, the, so the scenes that feature uh, his spider powers... It's very cool, I mean, very interesting and cool how they do that because, you know, there's a scene where he sets up a web, there are scenes, like, where he wraps up, wraps up, like, prey, that kind of thing. It is very well handled, it looks very spider-like, you get, you know what they're going for here, and they, the, the, the role 
of the spider is very well handled in the movie. Yeah, they do a fairly good job with the role of the lizard in the same way. Um, that I mean, there are there are a few weird, you know oddities. Like I could have sworn that the proportional strength of a spider was greater than the proportional strength of a lizard, but I actually think it benefits the movie that they don't play it that way. So hey, I think the movie did what it decided to do was that. Um Spider-Man didn't just instinctively know all of his powers and was still trying to figure out what he was and was not capable of, which is why his spider sense wasn't as heavily, you know, played. Um, I mean, you could tell it was there. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, that, as I said, all of that seemed to work actually in the favor of the movie, not in the, oh, well, I guess they just don't get it. No, they managed to make it work. So, visually, the movie was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to hit on music, and I know we have been comparing to the Raimi movies just because you have this close proximity, but as for, like, direct comparisons, we've tried to avoid it because it's really not fair, um, given that they didn't try to be, but this is a point that really just struck home because Danny Elfman did a kick-ass job with the music for the Spider-Man movies, you know, Love him or hate him or think he's repetitive, I don't care. It was, it sounded like how Spider-Man should. It had this comic book feel to it, and I mean, no offense to James Horner, he's done fantastic work. His music for Wrath of Khan and Aliens and all of that just done wonderful, wonderful work. But, you know, in their sense to be different, what we got was... Decent but fairly generic, and it doesn't. From it. Yeah, no, I don't remember anything from it either. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. It's it's not bad, but it's not good. Which is, you know, it doesn't make or break the movie. But if the music had been better, the fact that you don't remember anything from it actually stands out. That's yeah. actually the problem. Because I um, remember the Spider-Man theme from the Raimi movies. You know, yeah. I, I can I can still hear it. So, and yeah. there are few points actually getting back to the, the camera work for a second where the camera work could have been better it blurs a little bit when i say visually it's fan a fantastic movie i mean overall in a choreographic sense uh and all that there are places they could definitely have improved so things to look out for um the first which is really small and then i'll let uh ram take the other one which is that in every marvel movie or most of them stanley has a cameo and I found this cameo to be possibly the most entertaining one to date. I really enjoyed it. Um, you, you don't even really have to be looking for it. It's very obvious. In other movies, it's just been a very, like, in the Daredevil movie, it was a very small, like, if you, were, if you blinked, you'd have missed it. This, you won't miss this one. You can't miss this one. I um, also would say... Uh... One of the things that I adored is how they handled the, uh, the Flash Thompson story arc um, for the very little time that it gets in the movie. Um, it actually manages to portray someone who could have been a very two-dimensional bully in a way that really makes him a full, deep character. And uh, it's like a little microcosm of how the comic went, how the comic took it. And... Uh, you know, some of the scenes are blinking, you'll miss them, but it's great. Mm-hmm. I think, um, I think we're going to call it there. I think, I think this is a movie you should see. Definitely. It's one for the collection. Um, it's definitely better than, Sp it's better than a lot of Marvel movies. Um, is it going to beat Avengers? No. Really didn't stand they a weren't chance even, They weren't even advertising this to compete with Avengers. No, not even remotely. But, I mean, most of the other Marvel movies out there, it will be. It, it even, I mean, it's, that's not setting the bar very high, but it beats Spider-Man 3, no contest. Yeah. Uh, I'd put it better than X-Men First Class. I'd put it better than uh, quite a few of well, them. Yeah, I mean, these are good movies, and it's way better than those. So, it yeah. was a really good It movie. was a really good one. I put it better than Iron Man 2 and Thor. Oh, I would definitely. Yeah. yeah, because, well, yeah, and, and those movies, you know, I think both had the capacity to be a lot better, but they designated a little bit too much time to Avengers. Now, that worked in Avengers' favor because that time had been dedicated there, and... Yeah, it is actually... It is actually conspicuous how little tie-in there is to the rest of the Marvel Universe in this. There is no Avengers. There is a reason. 
Oh, well, don't, well, don't worry about it too much. Uh, you can edit some things out. Yeah, they, they need to keep the rights to... Uh, Columbia needs to keep the rights to Spider-Man, so they churned out a movie. Um, for a, I, I do it a disservice. This is not a churned out movie. Um, anyways, so, our final review of it. This is a good movie. You should see it. I do miss Bruce Campbell, though. I do miss Bruce Campbell. But that was a rainy thing. So. Uh, I'm Albatross. I'm Ryan Nessus. I'm Snake Eyes. And until next time. We're the Brothers Herman. Signing off.